Hello! Welcome back to part two of making food memories with homemade egg noodles. If you didn't catch part one, I'm going to put a link below so you can check that out first before you watch this. Then it'll all make sense. All right. Now, this is what I've got going. Well, first of all, I wanted to show you how, uh, what a good batch of egg noodles that little, that a few ingredients made. Now you look at this. This is three eggs and approximately two cups of flour and enough and some salt and enough flour to roll it out. That makes a lot. This is a three egg batch of noodles. Now, if you have to let them set a little while, the moisture will come up in them. So it's good to toss them in a little bit of flour and that way they all they stay separated nicely, which is what you want. Okay, so what I've got going here, I've got, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit and show you. I've got my, my chicken broth and chicken going here. And in the first part, part one, I showed you how, uh, I showed you this. So, and this is a combination of homemade chicken broth. Uh, it's white meat chicken that I canned and processed last, well, in November. And there's some homemade chicken broth in there, but there's also some store-bought chicken broth. Uh, and I had done a video previously on, on some that I was trying out, so I'll try to put a link to that, too, so you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, here is... Now, this is my broth and chicken. Now, what I'm going to do is, what I'm doing right now, I'm just bringing this up to the boil. And um, I have a little extra chicken broth here that I put in this jar, uh, just in case I need it. Because sometimes we don't have any way of knowing how much uh, broth our noodles will absorb. So it's good to have a little extra on hand. And when you're making fresh egg noodles like this, the flour and the flour that's on them and the flour content will thicken up your broth some. So sometimes you need to thin that out a little bit. Now these noodles are going to take approximately, well, you know what, I don't know. It just depends on how long, how many noodles you have. But um, they're going to cook until they're done. <laughs> so... You can see that my broth is boiling now. And this is the best, best way. I'm going to put more flour on there. I don't want them to stick. And you can, as they sit, you'll feel that moisture coming out in them. They won't be totally dry, like as if you were to, to dry the noodles. But now I'm going to turn this down. I don't want it boiling so hard. But just a good boil. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to put my noodles in just a little bit at a time. And as I put them in, I'm going to stir them around so that they don't clump or stick. Now, this smells good already because it's nice and chickeny. Now, as I put them in, I stir them. I, I would never just dump the whole thing in, the whole bowl in. That just wouldn't do. <laughs> and you know, you're working with, um, actually, you're working with a pasta here. If you want to think about it in terms of that. Now, these noodles can be used uh, to make a beautiful soup. You can just boil them in water if you want to and rinse them and use them in other things, but... This is my preferred method. Now, I'm coming to the end of my noodles here, you can see. And I'm stirring and stirring and stirring. Now, I've got the last of them, not very many. I'm just going to take that whole thing and that's a little bit of flour that's going to be in the bottom of that bowl. I don't care, that's just going to uh, thicken and enrich the broth as they cook. Now then, I'm going to show you these. 
show you what they look like. See what they look like? They look good already, don't they? See, you can do this. It's easy. Now, back in the day, uh, I used to bring home a chicken, a whole chicken for, I don't know, dollar forty nine, <laughs> and I would boil the chicken until it was falling off the bone, and then I would strain it out and I would pick the chicken. Now, just so you know, the reason I'm stirring these is because I want to make sure they don't stick before they come back up to that good boil. Afterwards, you don't have to stir them so much, but right now I just want to give them some TLC, make sure they're going to be good. Okay, now then, anyway, I would bring home the chicken and cook it up, and then I would pick the bones and separate everything out after they cooled, and uh, then I would have that beautiful rendered broth from that chicken, and it was so rich unbelievably rich and good and well seasoned it with salt and pepper and then I would uh, put um, everything back in make my noodles and have a huge batch of noodles and in those days because I had four growing children and um, their dad <laughs> it was I would make a six batch, six egg batch of noodles. And there might be a little left over, maybe for lunch or whatever, but not very often. And then, of course, I would make mashed potatoes, uh, green beans, that kind of thing, to go with it to round out that meal. And sometimes, if I was feeling really, 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 really ambitious, I might make some uh, homemade yeast rolls. I would have to be really ambitious, have a lot of time. So, now, as you can see, see if I can show you here, it's boiling up. See what that looks like? See how that is there? Now, I've got this turned down fairly low, but I'm going to turn it down too low. Now, I don't recommend putting a lid on these. You really don't need to. And in the meantime, I'm going to grab a spoon because I want to taste that broth. I'm going to check for seasoning. Now, if you want to cook well, please, please taste your food. You have to taste what you're cooking. I'm going to taste this. Mmm. Oh, yum. Okay. That's salty enough. I don't need any more salt in there. When it comes to the end, I may or may not put pepper in it. I probably won't because uh, some of the family is not enormous on pepper. Some are. And, you know, you know how sometimes you go, what's those black specks in there? <laughs> if it was just for me, I would have some pepper in there. But, it's okay. It tastes really, really good. And I'm just going to let this cook. Now, I want to tell you that when you're, the good, one reason to roll out your egg noodles thin is because they actually taste better, they're more tender, they cook faster, and um, I think they're just better all the way around. Now, if you want to make your egg noodles uh, thicker, well, there's no law against that, certainly. You can do it, but um, personally, I like them thin, and early on when I was making them, uh, I took them to a family get-together Gosh, it was years and years and years and years and years ago. And um, my 
uh, sister-in-law at that time said, accused me of not making them homemade because she said they were too perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's okay. <clears throat> uh, making chicken and noodles is actually, and you can do the same thing with beef, by the way. You can do this, put this in beef and beef broth, and you have a beautiful beef and noodles. But... <clears throat> Honestly, um, the way my great aunt Rosie's noodles, she was um, known for those homemade chicken and noodles. And she did everything well, but that's the one thing that people just equated with her. <clears throat> and actually, this is probably one of my signature dishes. This is really kind of one of the things I'm known for among close family members is my chicken and noodles. And I'm happy to share them with anyone because everybody should know how to make these, right? Look at that. Don't they look good? They look delicious. Now, I'm going to grab a fork. I'm going to pull one out. And I'm going to taste it for doneness. Now, you see, we're in real time here. We're in real time, and these have not been in here that long. I can kind of feel... See the way that looks? I can kind of feel, uh, let me get a thicker one because it's better to do a little thicker. Because you know they're not perfect. They're homemade. Alright. So I'm going to taste it for tenderness. I don't, I know they're really not done, but I want to see where they're at. And they should be uh, tender. Uh, not like spaghetti or other pastas which you might eat al dente you don't want to eat these al dente you want them to be uh, done not mushy but done okay okay it tastes really good but it's too chewy and if they're that chewy I know they're not done so I'm going to turn my heat down to a nice simmer like I said, I don't put a lid on. I'm not running a horse race here. I'm just cooking noodles. And we're just going to let them cook and swim in this beautiful broth. Now, do you see, see the change in the broth? See that it's a little thicker? See that? That's what we want. Okay. All right. That's it. That's chicken and noodles. That's my food memory. And Great Aunt Rosie, this is for you, sweetie. This is in memory of you. She was, she, she was a beautiful, wonderful person. A lovely Christian lady it, that people were always welcome in her home. And I'm very, very glad to be related to her. Okay? Love you, Great Aunt Rosie. <laughs> All right. Listen, I hope you give this a try. If I can do it, you can do it. So, give it a try and let me know how it works out. And I'll post this to my uh, Facebook page, Simple Food, Simple Life, too, along with some pictures. And um, I think that if you give it a try, you will really, really love it. See this broth here? I'm not going to need it. Plenty brothy enough, so I'll just put that in the fridge for another day or the freezer. Okay? All right, give it a try. I love you. You know I do. Okay? And you just remember that little is much when God is in it. Okay, I love you. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for watching Simple Food, Simple Life. Please like, subscribe, and share.